Hello my happy fruits, welcome to the channel. This is Sarah from the Koi Sorry Bark Fast and I wanted to present to you with a video of the books that I finished in January. The first book on this list is The Curse by Michael Ostell. It is the uh, it is a novelization of the Nancy Drew series on the CW, which honestly I heard about and like as a huge Nancy Drew fan I was like, hmm, her pass. But uh, this book was really interesting. Basically there was like this big town festival and this mystery behind it and there may be supernatural elements, who knows. Um, it actually got me really interested in the show if the things in the book are actually in the show. But like when I first heard about it, I was like, Nancy's mother is alive, there's no Hannah Gerwin, there's no Ned, there's no Bess, there's no George. How can we even call this Nancy Drew? You know, but uh, uh, after reading this one, I'm kind of willing to give it a shot, so that's cool. The next book on the list is The Sick Rose by Richard Barnett, which is a book of medical illustrations of various diseases. And it's fascinating and horrible to realize that people went through that, but also they're weirdly beautiful. The next book is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Menescalco. I'm not sure about the pronunciation of the last name, but I loved this book. I loved Adiros. I loved Thomas. I thought that it was fantastic. The mystery was a lot of fun. And as somebody who's interested in, like, basically the whole Ripper thing, um, I don't want to call myself a Ripperologist because, I don't know, like, basically he was just some dude who felt compelled to kill people. But, like, the whole thing behind the time period and the respectability politics. Like, I guess the whole politics of it is basically what fascinates me about that time period. Because the Ripper himself is basically, honestly, kind of a basic bitch. But uh, yeah, so anyway, I really, really like this book. Um, I would highly recommend it. It's The Skeleton Takes a Bow, which is the second book in the Family Skeleton series by Lee Perry. Um, this one, Sid, who is an ambulatory talking skeleton, and no, it doesn't say how he can like talk and see things when he's just bones, so just put that off the window. There's, there's really no explanation except magic. Um, basically, he wants to be Yorick. His skull is left in the school and he overhears a murder. And George Thackeray, who is a professor at a college, it tries to help him solve it. Um, the whole series is great, although this one didn't really hit what I needed. I mean, it was good, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think it was as good as the other two. And that's okay, because I mean, the series is really, really a lot of fun. The next one is Feel Good 101 by Emma Blackery. Um, Emma Blackery is a YouTuber that I've been watching for years and I've been meaning to pick up this book and just give it a shot. Like I am not the intended obvious, but there is actually some pretty good advice. The next book is Hunting Prince Dracula by again Carrie Maniscalco. I, I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, this one I didn't like as much as uh, Stalking Jack the Ripper. Um, something about it just left me cold. Um, basically, Audrey Rose and Thomas go to Romania to study forensics in a creepy castle and murder appears, which, I mean, it should have been fascinating, it just wasn't. The next book is Pretties by Scott Westerfield. Um, this is probably the first four books at least. I haven't read the rest of them. <laughs> Tally gets back and she has her operation. Tally has gotten her operation and she is at a party and she's having fun and she's being pretty and happy and then suddenly somebody from her past 
comes along and basically rocks her fragile little world. Um, it's a fun book. It's a very simply but weirdly cinematically written. Like the way it's written, I could picture these things perfectly in my mind, but the writing is not complex at all. Um, I recommend this series. It's really an interesting thing to read and it makes you think and I'm sorry I still say that this is basically the love story of Tally and Shay and nothing, nothing will change my mind. The next book is Catfishing on Catnet by Naomi Pritzker. Um, I got this book from NetGalley and I liked it so much I got it on Kindle. It's a story of a girl named Steph and her mother and they are on the run from Steph's abusive father. Steph has a social media app called Catnet and meets somebody named Cheshire Cat who turns out to be an AI. So not actually a person, but totally a person at the same time. And things happen. Like, I don't want to spoil it because it's a really great book. Um, I have the sequel, Chaos and Catnet, from NetGalley, and I'm gonna read it in a bit, but uh, I'm basically savoring it because I love this world. I love stuff. I love Cheshire Cat. I love, like, all the friends she meets. It's great. It's just so wonderfully diverse is a strange case of Finley Jane by Katie Cross. This is the uh, prequel to the Steampunk Chronicles and it's basically the story of Finley meeting a girl named Phoebe and helping her out as she is betrothed to a man who may not be what he seems. It's a little bit Jekyll and Hyde, a little bit Frankenstein, and obviously a bunch of steampunk thrown in. So this one is due to come out June 1st, 2021, it is the story of Wyatt, who is a witch and also trans, and he is engaged to a member of the Fae because there have been kind of back and forth and things are all wrong, so hopefully that their marriage is supposed to unite these two separate groups and then uh, something happens with Wyatt's magic and boom shiitake goes down um it's like a great on the run like it I can't describe like how fun this book it's dark but in a fun way and I really enjoyed it and Wyatt has like a very great voice like a really strong character oh this book is so good anyway that's the witch king by at edgemont and it's the first in the series entitled the witch king next up is every hearted doorway by shauna mcguire um I have a review of this. I'm not sure if it's up yet, so I'll let that one speak for itself. The next one up in my list is Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix. This is basically about horror paperbacks around the 70s, 80s, 90s, and it goes into like synopsis of all these, and some of these are just like straight up wild. like. They sound so bizarre. There's actually one that I end up reading, um, which is on this list. But anyway, it has pictures of the paperback. It goes into like some of the history of publishing. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. It was a lot of fun. I really like Grady Hendrix's work. So the next one is Trouble Girls by Julia Lynn Rubin. Um, it's a neck alley book and it is due to be released June 1st, 2021. Okay, this is basically the best way to describe it is a queer Thelma and Louise. Um, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's such a good book. Um, I read it like right after watching Promising Young Woman and just those two things combined together, like my heart is just 
anyway, so um, I highly recommend this one. It's written really well and uh, oh, the feels. The next book on this list is Break My Heart a Thousand Times by Daniel Waters. Um, this is a story about some time in the future and an event has occurred that has basically killed two million people and the book never explains what happens but basically ghosts are coming back to town and the people who have grieved their loved ones have to deal with their spirits being like up close and personal and the next book is Let's Pretend This Never Happened by Jenny Lawson, also known as the Bloggast. Jenny writes a lot about her depression and she's very funny and she has a thing for taxidermy, which is intriguing to say the least. Um, the next book is When the Darkness Loves Us by Elizabeth Engstrom. It's two novellas. The first one is When the Darkness Loves Us, and the second one is called Beauty Is. Um, I'm gonna focus on When the Darkness Loves Us because that's like actually the one that really intrigued me from Paperbacks from Hell. Um, it's basically the story of Sally, who is 16 years old. She is married, she is pregnant. Um, yeah um so she goes down she like hears a noise in the bottom of her house and she goes down exploring and it gets stuck like in basically the bottom of the well and like there are like caves and tunnels and such um she gets stuck for like 20 years and she actually manages to escape and everything has changed and her husband has married her sister yep yeah and, and nobody's like ew you're gross why why would you think that that was appropriate but uh i mean apparently nobody cares that this dude married a 16 year old girl either but anyway uh and last but certainly not least we have broken in the best possible way by jenny lawson which is a neck alley book um it's so good like the way that jenny writes about her depression like you feel it with her and like i wrote in my good news video i'm sure a lot of people are be like oh, she is so self-absorbed but i mean the thing with depression is that you kind of have to focus on yourself to make yourself feel better and like i saw a lot of myself in her writing i mean even though obviously we are radically different people. So, broken in the best possible way is due to be released April 6, 2021. Again, don't quote me on that because uh, publication dates are kind of like way up in here. So those were the books that I finished in 2021 of January. Um, it was a lot more than I thought I would. I was pleasantly surprised with myself. So uh, I'm just going to keep on knocking on that TBR. Uh, have a hoobie day and keep it fruity. Bye.